Okay, now this is episode 24. Alright, um, we'll stick with the coil for a while and the basics of the coil. I've explained those fairly simply, but someone's asked me some questions which um, begs a little bit more explanation about the ignition coil. Now, I explained before that there is a primary winding with lesser windings in the coil and a secondary winding with more. Essentially the coil and the iron core inside, essentially the coil is a transformer, okay? So the basis of the transformer is, is that what occurs on the primary electrically will occur in the secondary and what occurs in the secondary will be reflected vice versa on the primary, okay? So they are linked together and they are linked together by inductance, okay? Now to understand inductance, we have an inductance of the primary coil, okay? And the inductance is a resistance to voltage building up inside the primary coil, okay? So when the points of the ignition system close, now I'll move over here to an ignition oscilloscope. I'll explain this briefly. This is an oscilloscope view of an ignition spark from the beginning of the spark when the points open to the in the, to the spark and including everything that happens after that when the points close and again when the points open. Okay, I've explained how that works in the distributor when the points are opening at a certain at a certain time. Okay, at this point when the points open and then the points close time. So the points close time is the dwell angle in degrees of close time. And what we uh, used to use is an oscilloscope like this. So it would have a clamp an inductive clamp on uh, number one cylinder. It would have an inductive clamp on the on the uh, number one cylinder here for timing. It would have an inductive clamp on the coil lead for the total voltage. It would have a clamp on the circuit breaker. You'd have power as well, but circuit breaker and the high tension lead on the number one and uh, and the coil lead was essentially picking up a, a scope pattern which would be expressed as voltage, this being zero volts, okay, this is minus, and this is plus, and this being the time, milliseconds, so that's in each division is one millisecond, okay, and each volt is, is, is kilovolts, okay, so that shouldn't be volts division, that should be kV, all right. Um, <clears throat> now, um, Actually, no, 10 kV, 10, 20, uh, no, that's more. Should be about 15 kV. 10 kV, if that's 10 kV, each one's 2.5 kV, actually. Yeah, that's what I reckon it is. That's, I don't know what that is. Um, anyway, it's wrongly marked, but we'll work with it, okay? This is in kV, so thousands of volts, okay? So 2.5 thousand volts, 10,000 volts, okay? in time milliseconds that's correct a millisecond per per gradual so the spark line would give you what occurred when the points opened we would get the initial voltage potential rising up okay to our 10,000 volts that would ionize the air gap in the between the spark plugs and then the spark would flow okay across the air gap now the voltage required to keep the spark flowing across the air gap air gap is much lower under two um, about two two to three kV thousand volts okay now that amount of time there in, in less than one millisecond the spark burns okay and then once the energy is dissipated from the coil secondary the coil continues to decay now what we see here is the oscillations okay and those oscillations occur both in the primary and the secondary side. And those oscillations are created by the condenser, the capacitor. Okay, so down here we've got a capacitor or, um, where did I have it before? Oh, sorry, there we go. We've got our condenser up there, our capacitor, which is in, uh, in parallel with the points, you see. So when the points open, the capacitor is running between the coil, negative and, and ground. All right. So... Our capacitor oscillates, okay, oscillates this in the positive, negative, positive, negative. See, we've got zero volts here, okay. So the voltage is going 
is going backwards and forwards. Now it's going forwards from the capacitor in the first reflection, okay, through into the secondary windings, and then as long as current continues to flow, it will be reflected back in what's called mutual inductance into the primary and out the primary as a spike going down here, okay, and then it will go back up, giving us primary inductance, okay, out the secondary. If there's any continuing spark or current flow of any kind out of the secondary dissipation, it will flow back, and that will continue by mutual inductance. So mutual inductance means that any, um, if there is any current flowing at the secondary, okay, it will be reflected in the primary. Because again, this is a transformer. What happens in one direction happens in the other direction. Okay. So um, any changes we will see in these oscillations. Okay. But the oscillations are a product of that condenser. And the condenser, as I pointed out here, here's a condenser as well. There. Okay. That condenser is tuned to produce these oscillations. And it is tuned with... It is tuned with the in the total inductance of both the primary and the secondary. Okay, the condenser is not just tuned to the primary inductance. Okay, now inductance in the primary inductance is the resistance to current flowing into the coil. So it takes some time after the points close here before the coil charges up. Okay, all right. So it has to charge up and that takes some time. It has to overcome the inductance in here before it can charge the, the primary winding back up. And then once it's charged up here, you can see, okay, that's at unity there because remember it's taking off from a, from a, from a tap which is the circuit breaker. Then the points open again. And this line here is the same as this line here. That's a trigger point. So we have a potential, a spark starts to burn okay and then the energy goes below what the spark can what the uh, spark requires the energy remaining in the coil and we see the tail end of these oscillations that was created by the condenser and the condenser being tuned to the inductance of both of these coils means that if we have a problem on the secondary side okay as well as the primary side or we just have a problem on the secondary side um, or we have a problem on the primary side, that will be reflected in the oscillations. That will be a bias in the oscillations because um, you have to um, remember that, that the capacitor is tuned to the inductance at the peak expected um, inductance of this, of this system. And the inductance of the secondary system and the primary system includes the spark plug leads that have some inductance, okay? Um, I'll just mention modern coils which have coils over the over the spark plug remove actually also remove the inductance of the spark plug lead okay and that allows current to flow faster into the coil that's just one thing okay because flow into the coil is controlled by the amount of inductance the amount of total inductance so um, these oscillations will have a bias as I, as I mentioned before if you put a coil in that does not have a matched inductance, that the inductance of the coil, primary and secondary, is not matched with that condenser value, you'll get a bias in the oscillations and you'll have a reduction in the efficiency. So the bias will be all the way through the oscillations from start to end uh, of the spark and you will have a drop in efficiency of the coil. Okay, And that will also be reflected in the bias of oscillations, which are more in one direction more DC than plus than DC minus in one direction, you will get a build up on one side of the points or the other side of the points, depending on which polarity the bias is. So that's showing you if you've got a bias on here, that you've got a bias in one direction that's out of tune of the condenser, and that if you've made a change to the coil, that could be it. Otherwise, it may be something that has changed in the coil or the secondary side. Or anything in the primary side because again the coil is a transformer what happens on one side happens on the other side and vice versa due to the mutual inductance 
Um, now, on the scope patterns, we had a number of um, different patterns that we could observe. We could actually observe a, a primary pattern, which was just the clamp from the primary represented in a scope pattern. Um, and you would see the oscillations on the primary, okay? And then you would see the points close. Um, but, you know, oscillations on the secondary and oscillations on the primary, um, you're only going to get um, mutual inductance back through the coil reflecting so long as there is some current flow at the, at the lead, okay? So for the, if that's bleeding down due to the uh, resistance um, or the, the, the magnetic field's dissipating, once it dissipates, it's dissipated. So, um, um, yeah, that's pretty much the end of it until the point's shut. Um, now, if you increase the RPM, okay, and you keep going faster and faster and faster, um, the amount of time that the points closes for will determine how much time it has to charge up. Now you see this has got a slope before it charges up, but this is the secondary. You've got to actually look at the primary for this and you'll see a, um, a period of time where it's got to overcome the inductance and then the voltage begins to rise as it charges up the primary coil, primary winding, um, slowed by the inductance. Um, now, um, as it's slow to charge that up, um, during the dwell time, we can get to an RPM, which isn't far, um, you know, which is only a couple thousand RPM before we start to um, have insufficient amount of charge time for the amount of time the engine's got. 